Here's here's my second prediction. So people are going to be marketers, pretty much all professionals, really. I think they're going to go through a phase of disillusionment about artificial intelligence. I feel like in the coming months, maybe not in the next six months, but like definitely next year, there's going to be some discussion around like artificial intelligence isn't all it was cracked up to be. Artificial intelligence is dumb. Maybe there's going to be a bunch of companies who just like when you see a bad Instagram ad and it ruins consumer sentiment, there's going to be a bunch of bad artificial intelligence apps that mm-hmm. ruin consumer sentiment. But here's what I see happening. And this has happened many times in the past. The red line is the perceived or the kind of actual utility of a particular technology. So let's compare artificial intelligence to digital cameras, which is what actually happened. So if we start down the bottom left of this graph, there's like life before the breakthrough happened. There's work going on. People are trying to figure out like, how do we get a digital camera to work so we don't have to use this stupid film stuff and develop it and all those sorts of things? How do we get an artificial intelligence bot to do stuff for us? And then there's the breakthrough, which for the artificial intelligence community, let's just call it open AI's chat GPT. Like it comes out of nowhere just like the digital camera kind of came out of nowhere and it was an overnight, like, holy smokes. But, you know, it had been like, it had been in development for a long time. So it sort of, you know, it like takes 10 years to become an overnight breakthrough for want of a better term. So this breakthrough happens and everyone looks at it. They look at chat GPT. They look at this digital camera, which might've been like the size of a bar fridge and it needed like nine batteries and it could print like a nine pixel photo without needing to use film. And they're like, wow, look at that. And then kind of reality sets in and -hmm. people realize this is actually quite, this is actually quite, yeah, it's, it's not as good as what we used to use before. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, things like chat GPT have limitations because it does, it does have quite a steep learning curve to learn how to get the absolute most out of it. It does have limitations in that it was trained on data from September, 2021. If I recall correctly, it's got limitations because you can only do 25 prompts every three hours on the GPT-4 version. And so hype, it, it sort of goes up after the breakthrough. So you'll see here, there's the utility, which is the red line, and then hype sort of trails it. And mm-hmm. this is what's called a negative feedback loop. So if you looked at how does your body uh, manage blood sugar levels, it's on a negative feedback loop like this. Like after something happens, your body goes, holy smokes, blood sugar is too high. We got to bring it down. This is the same way that the earth kind of uh, modulates its carbon dioxide levels. This is like a normal thing to see. So you'll notice here that the hype actually goes below where it was before the breakthrough happened. Interestingly enough, which means that people will actually think like AI is stupid. Not like, oh, AI is coming. We We don't understand a whole bunch about it. They'll actually be resistant to it. But if you look at the utility, the utility has not dropped down anywhere near as low as the hype. Mm. So we're going to go through a phase where there's bad apps and people will put, we've said this before, people will put artificial intelligence on their website homepage, even though it's not artificial intelligence. People will make apps that just suck. There'll be problems with data. There'll be problems with, you know, like chat GPT at some point might break or, you know, a robot might get released on Twitter to learn human language and it turns into a Nazi, which has already happened. And there'll be like this negative kind of bad phase but development will continue so just like the uh, the camera the digital camera got released and there was like this negativity around like why would i pay nine thousand dollars for a thing that takes two photos and they're like you know 0.01 megapixels of um of resolution the development continues even though the hype has dropped away and then at some point we reach this law of exponential return so in computing <clears throat> it's called moore's law which means that the number of transistors that you can fit on a circuit board doubles every 18 months in photography. I I don't know what the name of the law is, but it's basically the same thing. Like the number of megapixels that a camera of a particular size can produce doubles every 18 months. I found this one, (coughs) excuse me, called uh, after the man who, I don't really, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Yeah. Which basically says the amount of power in a GPU chip which is the stuff that ai runs on doubles every 18 months so this thing starts to really kick in just like with digital cameras like you know who cares if it doubles every 18 months and goes from 
0.01 megapixel to 0.02 megapixel. And then it goes from 0.02 to 0.04. But at some point you go from four to eight. And then like three years later, you've gone from four to 16, which is amazing. And so mm -hmm. the same thing is going to happen here. And artificial intelligence is going to get exponentially cooler, exponentially easy to use. And there'll appear to be this kind of explosion, which is similar to the breakthrough. It's been going on in the background the whole time. But in terms of utility, there'll be, you know, like, small business accounting specific AI tools that you can use and they'll be sick. There'll be copywriting specific AI tools that you can use and they'll be sick. There'll be guitar teacher AI tools and they'll be sick. There'll be a personal trainer AI. There'll be an AI for everything and the utility will just skyrocket and then the hype will catch up. So my main prediction is the fact that this blue line that we're seeing right now, the hype will drop off. And that does not mean that you should think, oh, AI is dumb. I shouldn't be using AI. There are so many crappy tools out there. We're never going to figure this out. It's just not worth it. Stick with it because if you are kind of closer to your usage of artificial intelligence being more like this utility line rather than waiting like everyone else does, you will be one of those people, and we say this all the time, who get so good at using artificial intelligence in marketing that no one will ever catch up to you. There you go. There you have it. What do you think about, what do you think about that? I think it, I think it's accurate, and, and and we've seen it over and over again. We've seen it in pretty much everything. We've seen it with Facebook ads. We've seen it with Google ads. We've seen it with uh, crypto. You know, we've seen it yes a long time. So crypto is a good example of this. So we keep on seeing it. So I do agree. Crypto is a fantastic example. Yeah.